since this is so kind of just chill and fun, I, I sort of feel like just doing really old stuff I haven't done in years. And thank God this is old. Thank God this is far, far, far behind me. Um, but this is called The Betrayal. Although I called the file The Betrayal Fuckity Fuck. And I have no idea why. So let's just, let's just call it that, the betrayal, fuckity fuck. Here we go. Uh, I'm at the Del Rey Ballroom on a bitter December night, listening to classic rock covers. You keep calling from the treatment center in northern Kansas, but I ignore the calls until I don't. I hear your voice like gravel in the alley, a sickening in the delta of my rib cage, chewing at my belly button. What happened with that woman? A woman I didn't know sitting next to you a week earlier on your tattered couch. Your boss and I broke into your apartment littered with uneaten ramen noodles, cigarette butts, and loose change scattered on the coffee-stained carpet to take you to detox. Her bleached hair pulled like a tug of war into a high ponytail, her bare ankles cold in short black leggings and glossy sneakers. It was not the time to ask. I helped her fill your gorge of a bag with jeans, boxer shorts, flannel pants that sometimes I wore when I stayed at your house, your favorite Husker shirt. Your frail body in my arms for a bewildered moment before she vanished, or before you vanished into the passenger seat of her silver Honda Civic and she whisked you away to Kansas like a bullet. Your voice breaking, you tell me that you were drunk, that you barely remember it, that it didn't mean anything, that you love me, you love me, you love me, as if screaming it over and over will cauter cauterize the relentless hemorrhaging, the spilling of dreams out onto the sidewalk. I can't listen to it anymore, so I hang up the phone, running through the brick streets of the Haymark Haymarket, but there is nowhere to run from you fucked her. I crouch behind the cement steps leading up to the candy shop where you and I tried a dozen flavors of licorice last summer. As laughing passersby, stumbling out of bars, watch me wail. I call your sponsor, and he says, I bet you feel like you've been shot, don't you? He offers me a ride, but I insist on walking down 9th Street at a shrouded midnight crawling with secrets, listening to the ghost of Tom Joe. The highway is alive tonight. Nobody's killing nobody over where it goes. And at home, I lay my head down on top of my piano, my fingers frozen upon the keys, numb and foundering as they struggle to comprehend. I speak to an empty living room. I guess God's got this now. Thank you.